Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. <laughs> but in today's video, we're going to take a close look at the wireless arcade stick from Datafrog. Or actually, there are a couple of companies, Online Express, who are just selling this. But what are we getting with this and how good it is? That is, of course, something we're going to find out today. So when it comes to these plug and play devices, they are quite interesting. So first of all, we have seen something similar here on the channel. So this Y3 Arcade Fighter stick, take consideration there are different companies out there making this. And yeah, I must say the overall, let's say, first impression is not good. So the reason why is not because you need to assemble the bar top. They did a missing job with this, like having even a rubber over it for protecting the connection. But when you're looking at, I say, the layout, we're just having these long travel cheap feel buttons and also the distance between these things are absolutely horrible or that is why i personally think of it underneath we're having the suction knobs and the battery compartment for the three double a batteries all right the toilet paper manual and in here we're having even the option for different languages so this is in German language and in English. So, interesting choice. The toilet paper metal is quite extended in different languages. It explains how everything works. So, if you have any questions, you can also check the manual. But I will also give you a quick overview in this video. And here is the all famous 4K game stick light, and that nothing to do with 4K. Maybe you can use it in a 4K television, but it doesn't have a 4K signal output you need to be happy if it's at least 1080p the sd cards are nowadays like no brand whatsoever even there is not a marking how let's say how big it is is absolutely like a bad thing we need to back up this later on because otherwise it gets corrupted automatically the 4k game stick they did some improvement i already noticed that and of course to back with all the necessary like stuff for assembly of the arcade sticks and the tiny dongle over here that you need to plug in because actually you're only having one usb and this is a configuration of one usb dongle with two controllers and a micro usb because this thing needs some juice we can use it juice from the television or actually get ourselves a separate 5 volt normal charger not a fast charger so where this thing is just a stick you can plug into your television sometimes you will need an extension cord because this thing is very wide and it will not fit in every HDMI port and I don't know if this every let's say every company will deliver this because this is like a hit or miss with these companies okay so let's do an assembly of the joystick itself so what's interesting that we do need a little bit more assembly than normal normally we're having the configuration that the ball top already has been assembled to this part over here we don't need to forget the dust cap and we just need to screw it in like that that's the only thing that you need to do of course besides adding the batteries the other downside is that this thing is quite long i'm not a big fan of this and the reason why we are actually holding it it's not super good it's not like super comfortable but you know this is what you're getting with these devices and also the joystick the spring inside mm, it's not the best select and start over here on off switch does it also comes with let's slap the batteries in and let's have some fun man so what you can actually see at the side over here i'm having the game stick at the side there's one of those things you can actually do but if you're having an hdmi input on your television or just an hdmi monitor you can just use this game stick without any problem but let's take a close look when it comes to let's say the system and what are we actually getting and where are the improvements and how does it respond because some of these things are quite slow pressing up and down on the joystick if we go to the next game left and right will give us let's say the next page pressing the r1 or l1 here we can navigate through the left top corner you can see the different classes so this thing has main famicom gba classic the gba game boy Color, Mega Drive, PlayStation 1. I'm really curious about the Game Boy, or at least the Game Boy and the SPS ratio and the PlayStation 1, because this thing didn't run correctly on the last versions. That's it, there is nothing more to see. So the history, then collection, and the search function. So when it comes to the search function, it would automatically search or instantly search for your device or the system and the game itself. So that's kind of interesting moving all the way to the left but the downside is let's see if you have no any previews but in the middle top corner you can see that it switches to a page but also in the middle you can see that it switches to main famicom so we do have a navigation what kind of platform actually searching in now so the overall the overall functionality is quite nice so let's search 
to let's say Sonic 1 for the Game Boy Advance. Let's boot it up, giving us a loading screen, and you can see that almost instant load. And that seems to be working just fine. Pressing select and start will give us the special menu for a quick load and quick save. So let's say if you want to make a quick save, it will go automatically back to the game. And this is also the case with this. So this is kind of interesting. Screen settings can be set for 4 by 3 expense ratio. So when we're going to resume over here, it will set to a different resolution or at least the one that is best fit to the system itself. So it comes with a lot of features and also when it allows the navigation, it works quite nice now. It's not slow or whatsoever. So that's absolutely great. In the main menu, pressing select will give us the let's say main settings menu. Here we can change out the language. The key tune can be swept out or just muted. It's absolutely amazing. View local files, factory settings. If, if you're just going to be defaulting everything, I would not recommend messing with that. System information. So the model number seems to be version six already. Firmware is still version one. But okay, exiting, you can just basically go back. But there's one other thing I want to show, and that is view local files. Let's say you want to add some games, you don't want to mess around too much with the system. You can also make a folder in here, and after you're going to be opening it up, you can just load up files in this folder. It's not the most convenient thing, but if you want to test a game or you want to add a one single game, that's one of the options you can do. All right, so let's start off with some Neo Geo. So let's go to the menu and go to the screen setting and set this by 4x3. By Alright, so resume. And so far everything seems to be working fine. We have some cutoff from the display, but I think this is more a problem with my monitor. I don't really notice any input lag when it comes to the controls. So what I understand of they are using 2.4 GHz controls. The emulation itself is also very nice. Alright, I've noticed that I need to set the 4x3 aspect ratio every single time. Or at least... Hey! Okay, wait, do I have a brain fart? What's going on? Hey, it doesn't even work now! Oh man, so they didn't fix that issue. Okay, so that's just a fact. What we can do actually is give it a reboot. See if it's going to be booting up now. Because that is one of those things. So it's quite unfortunate that the Express Ratio doesn't work with every single system. But in the end, when it comes to MAME, take consideration with these cheap game sticks. We do have a limitation when it comes to emulation performance. So games like Tekken MAME. Or think about like a killer thing that will not run. So we're limited, limited to let's say the, can we say the first generation stuff? But there is still a lot of cool stuff we can still add to this and have a lot of fun with. But also here the emulation performance is quite nice. Don't have a weird thing going on with the audio. Another thing I also noticed, a lot of different, let's say, sound levels. So, for example, with the first new G game, I needed to put my monitor on 50% to get at least a decent amount of audio out. But with MAME and NES, it's completely different. By the way, the button mapping on this thing is weird. And like I mentioned before, I don't like these buttons at all. You can see that when I'm tapping them, not every single time, it will have an input. But the overall performance with NES is great, and we do have the SPS ratio that we didn't have with the main. So moving on to the Game Boy, I was really curious how it will going to be looking with the SPS ratio, and this is playable. But yeah, take consideration if in like 55 inch television, yeah, it's not going to be the best experience. Yet, but they are using a filter. There is no, there is no way of messing with the filter. You can see everything is not pixelated like it should be. And they're doing this a purpose to look, make it look a little bit better, especially on bigger screens. But again, like 55 inch or something like that on, an, on a game that is supposed to be played on a tiny display. Okay, so let's move on to some 60-bit era with the DJ Boy. And also here, I don't notice anything going on. Good evaluation. So that's absolutely amazing that we finally got some game stake that has some good overall performance. Because I've noticed a lot of problems in the past. 
Next up, Super NES. Let's see how that we will run. Oh, playing this with a joystick is very strange. The side buttons need to be used for going into the turns like it should be. But I can tell you, playing this with a joystick is not the best experience they can actually have with this, so no. But the overall emulation part is quite nice. Another system I just wanted to check out is some Atari. Personally, I have no less a connection with this because it was before my time. But it's kind of cool to see that we can actually play this out of the box. There are only a handful of games so far I've tested with this. Okay, so the first game I want to check out for PlayStation is some Tekken. And the main reason is that I love Tekken. Absolutely. But also when it comes to the audio, they completely mess up that part. Not with this stick, so... I got the feeling that he actually listening to me, the stuff I'm saying in here in these videos. Because it was quite annoying to have a game without any audio. Also, the emulation performance has been significantly improved. Where a lot of these games take had like overall bad PlayStation 1 performance. So I don't know what he actually did. But maybe they finally he managed to get these overall performance better with messing with the emulator. Because that's the main problem with these devices. You cannot do anything with it. If this thing has a problem with the game, there is no way of fixing it. But so far so good, so that's great. Another thing is like also the bottom mapping is like the original game. So also that they fixed. It's not a huge issue, you can just fix it in the main menu, pressing select to start over here. Here we can get into it. If you want to say mess around with it, you can just change it out. But again, six bit the layout is enough for most games. But let's try another one. But they didn't fix the problem with every single game. Okay, playing three of oh, play. I'm going to say something different. Playing Ridge Racer with a joystick. Yeah. That's not the way how you want to do this. But what you can do, the cheap plastic chemical PlayStation 1 controllers we're normally having also work on this device. So if you want to use a controller, replace the joysticks. It is possible and it's not expensive. Oh, oh that's what I mean. Oh, it's a very long time I've played this game, but... I have no idea how to do a drifting mode anymore. Come on, some Fast and Furious Tokyo Drifting. Come on, here we go. Oh, no, it's not going to be working today. Ooh. But when it comes to the game stick, I'm quite surprised how actually good it runs now. Unfortunate with PlayStation, uh, yeah, we have some issues. For example, we don't have the audio files. Yeah, that is a thing they're doing to save up space. And another thing I wanted to see what is in the inside, so I wanted to do it with my nail, but that doesn't work. Doesn't work with the dirty fingernail. But next up, let's see what we're finding in the inside, because it seems to be that this thing... Why can I find the opening for it? Because I have nothing much to say now. Yep, there we go. And I was really curious, like, how is the PCB looking? Why do you have the feeling that it looks slightly different? I don't have an other one by hand, but... Oh yeah, this is the new thing. They completely sanded it off, so we don't know what kind of chip this is actually running. Okay, that makes it really convenient. None, yeah, that's the only chip that we can actually read. So, what is also interesting that I understand that this is some kind of a receiver, so... This PCB has the option for receivers connect to it. Or at least what I think it is. But yeah, there is no external cooling whatsoever. It also doesn't get really hot that I have seen before. But yeah, that's actually it. There's a different color PCB, so for me it's absolutely an actually a different kind of a product. Or they, um, they try to improve it. So if this thing doesn't break, maybe we do have a decent product. But again, modifying the software is no, there is just no way of doing that. So yeah, this is a different game stick approach, and they try to improve it when it comes to emulation performance. We have absolutely way better overall performance when it comes to let's say PlayStation where we had a lot of issues. So it's kind of cool. There is no way of like say adding new stuff to it when it comes to emulators or messing with the software. The overall joystick quality, it's not the best out there. But yeah, we cannot expect anything better simply because we're not paying a lot of money for this. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing and it would be great to see you in the next video.